and welcome back to the Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and this video I'm going to do a little bit of a riff analysis. One of those things that I do every so often is I'm not really into kind of teaching you things verbatim but what I like to do in these videos is kind of show you a riff and kind of explain what's going on and hopefully that will give you some ideas for things you can incorporate into your own playing and your own writing. So what I'll do just quickly play through the riff and then we'll talk about what's going on in there. So let's break that down. It's in the key of A minor. It's actually, I guess technically it's A Dorian, but uh, don't worry too much about that. This is, I'm going to show you the, the notes involved, but the thing to remember, it's not just about the notes that we're playing, it's the way that we're playing it. It's, it's, it's about having a bit of feel and a bit of groove to it, as well as just playing the notes right. So we're starting off on an A power chord. It's not open A power chord, so open A string and second fret on on the but I'm kind of bouncing into that by playing a D power chord uh, invert inversion so it's basically just the open uh, A and D strings so D is the root A is the fifth degree play those and then kind of hammer on to give me that, that A chord. And then just a little bit of rhythm with the right hand. Yeah, it's about the feel and the groove of it as much as it's about the notes. And then that phrase finishes off with a little trick that I've showed you in another video I call the ACDC power chord trick. Where we're going to go to a G power chord you know, third fret on the bottom E string, then fifth fret on the A and D strings. But we're going to go down with the, with the root note down to an F sharp. Come up to the G. Which gives us that phrase. That's played through four times. I uh, can't stress enough, get your fingers around the notes when you're playing things like this, but think about how it feels. You, you, you need to have nice fluid picking action and it needs to have some, some groove to it. it. The thing that I think frustrates me the most, um, apart from people who don't tune the guitar before they play, um, the thing that frustrates me most is when you can hear somebody playing a piece that they've learned and you can you can hear it's almost like you can hear the thought processes that every note is like okay I must play this note next and then I must play that note next and it just sounds stilted. You need to be able to practice play something so it sounds attractive to the listener. It just sounds natural. So thinking about how you're playing as much as what you're playing is is kind of the objective of this exercise. Okay, so that's the first part of the riff, just that. Pattern. Then we go into uh, this. So let's break that down. It's basically a power chord pattern. A power chord to C then an A power chord, D, and then an A power chord. Now I could go to an E, because I'm playing an E power chord, I could play it here, which would give me. That's kind of just taking me further and further up the neck, and the next piece of the, the riff I need to be down here. So I'm playing the, the C power chord here at the third fret, D power chord here at the fifth, but for the E power chord, I'm going to go up a string, so playing an E at the 2nd fret on the D string, then the B at the 4th fret on the G, and the E at the 5th fret on the B string. 
Just means that we kind of stay down down the this end of the neck. I also quite like doing that because you're playing on the, the top strings, that last chord kind of cuts through a little bit more because it's, it's just got a bit more bite because you, you've got the, this, the, the, it's a slightly bitier sound on the, tre on the treble strings as opposed to playing the same notes but on the bass strings. Yeah. I mean if you can transition really quickly you could play play the, the E chord here, but I'm choosing to play it down here. And it's my riff, so we'll do it all the way I, uh, I've chosen. So yeah, so. And then we're finishing off on uh, chord substitution. The last chord in the riff is actually an E7 sus4. Sounds like this. So we've got an open E string, which is the root of the note, the root note of the chord. We've got a fifth B, second fret on the A string. We've got a flat seventh degree, the open D string. Then we've got a fourth degree, the A at the second fret on the G string. We've got another D, another flat seven there, and on uh, the the uh, third fret on the B string and the open E string. So basically, it's a dominant seventh. It's dominant seventh chord, but rather than playing a third degree, we're playing a fourth. And it's got a slightly unresolved sound, and it wants to go somewhere. And the natural place for it to go is up uh, an interval of a perfect fourth back to A, brings us back where we started. But rather than just going straight to that to that chord, I'm actually playing a. B flat dominant seventh. One of my favourite chord substitutions. Anywhere you can play a dominant seventh chord, you can get away with playing the dominant seventh chord that's got a root a flat fifth above or below uh, the root of the chord you're playing. So a flat fifth up from E is B flat. So the B flat dominant seventh is acting as a chord substitution for an E seven type chord. So I'm playing that, and then down to the uh, E7, E7 uh, sus4. Okay, so that's the progression. Now you could take those notes and just play it as it is, and if you want to, that's, that's fine but I'd encourage you more to think about the ideas behind that progression and think about what you can do to incorporate it into your own playing. So the important things in here, the little techniques that we've got, are there's that ACDC power chord trick on the first half. There's that seventh, that dominant seventh chord, uh, chord substitution where we're using a, a a B flat seven as a chord substitution for E seven type chord, and the most important thing is just thinking about how you play riffs and how you well, how you play anything. So it's got some some feeling to it, and you're not just going through the motions of playing notes. You know, absolutely bang on time. It kind of flows. It's got it kind of got a bit of a swing to it, and it feels natural and nice and something that you want to hear and the listener wants to hear. Okay, so ideas there. Learn that, like I say, as if, as it is, if you want, but take the ideas and be creative and make something of your own. Okay, that's all for now. Hope you found that useful and interesting. If you did, please click like down there. If you really enjoyed it and you want to see some other videos that I post onto the channel, then please click subscribe also down there. You're welcome to leave a comment, but to be honest, I don't always see comments left on videos. So if you've got a specific question that you want to ask me, whether it's about you know, music theory, composition, uh, guitar playing, guitar equipment, anything at all, you're better off going here, filling that form in and sending your question in that way. Don't always see comments on YouTube videos, but I am guaranteed to see that uh, any questions sent in through that form. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.